Hey guys, welcome back. So we're gonna start off on our AWS console. So I hope you've signed up for an S3 account and you can log into your console and navigate over to S3. What you wanna do here is we wanna create a bucket and you wanna give that bucket a name. We're just gonna call ours project neo-dev and create it. And if you look inside, you can see that it's empty because it's a bucket that we just created. Now the next place you want to go is you want to go to your your development folder or your application.yaml folder and you want to add an, another configuration. You're going to name it S3 bucket and you're going to call this project neo-dev because that's the bucket that I've named my bucket to be. You could change it to whatever you named your bucket to be and we're going to do that th the same for you. Our test and production environment. We're not going to go over them, but we're just going to leave it there because the configurations for our test and production is the same as for development. So that's all we have to do there. The next place you would want to go is you would need to go to your org people.css.scss file. <clears throat> now, why? That's because the file that I gave you way back. Um, to an episode that I don't remember where I gave you this code. The code is completely wrong. So I want you to take the code that I have pasted here. Uh, I'm not going to go through it with you because you're probably going to configure it to, uh, to a styling that you like yourself. So you could just grab it off the attachments that I always attach to my videos. So the next thing we're going to do after that is we're actually going to have to create a carrier wave dot rb file so where you do that is in your config initializers folder so i want you to navigate over to your config and your initializers and i want you to create a new file <clears throat> and in this file you're just going to make some configurations for for your carrier wave <clears throat> so you're going to do carrier wave dot configure do config and of course you're going to end that with an end and we're we'll just save this file first to get the color coding and what you're going to put in here is you're going to do the config fog credentials this is where fog comes in fog credentials and you're going to give them a provider your aws access key id and the region <coughs> And the region for me is US West 2. So you might be asking where the heck are you getting these variables? Well, that's what the application.yaml file is for. So the next thing you want to do is you want to do that for, you want to make some configuration such that if you're in an environment or if you're in testing, you're going to do something else. So we're going to make an if else statement. So what we're going to do is for testing, we're going to upload files to local temp folder. So we're just going to do that. In all honesty, we're not even going to use this code probably. So I'm just keeping there, it there for, for demonstration purposes. Since our config storage is pretty much always going to be fog. But if it's if the environment is test, then we're going to use file. Actually, this doesn't really make sense at all. So because we already set up our configurations, our application YAML folder to also use AWS. So really, this code is not needed. But we're just going to keep it there just for demonstration purposes. And we're going to add another two lines of code, again, just for demonstration purposes. You see that the fog directory we're going to use is defined as S3 bucket, which we defined here. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to add a module to use Minimagic. So what this does, the module Minimagic really just manipulates our image to change the quality. So if we look back to our avatar uploader, you could see that it has uh, an option for quality. So there's, a little, there's where the change is made. But other than that, I want you to go to your application.yaml file and change it to your access keys. Now I'm just gonna pause the video and change mine. So I want you to do the same for you. 
Okay, now that you've added your keys to your application.yaml and you've got your avatar uploader up and you've made the changes to carrier wave, what you need to do next is you need to go into your terminal and you need to restart the server. So you do a control C if you're on a Mac. I don't know what you're gonna type in if you're on a Windows, but I'm on a Mac, so it's control C. And you would run the server again using Rails S. And that would be that. So we would go back to our 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 folder or our browser and we navigate back to our account and we click on update your profile and if we go and plug in let's say a photo so let's see let's choose this small 1.1 megabytes and we click save changes that should save into our management console so this might take a while because the file is quite big but what it'll do is it'll save the location into this this avatar field so we'll just click that again it hasn't been saved yet so let's just go into project new dev and I'm just gonna pause the video until this uploads finish and then I'm gonna come back so the upload has finished you can see that it'll throw you back to the same page with profile updated and a picture of your uh, avatar that you've uploaded you can click it again to change the to change the the image again to something new um, that's the same picture isn't it you can change it to something new if you press save changes again then then pretty much it'll save again and it'll change the link in your database to point to the new avatar if you click here regenerate and look for avatar you can see that there's an image link now or not a link it's the file name to your link but uh, you could go to your management console and you could see that an uploads folder was created automatically for you and carrier wave does something really nice it it makes it so that it's really easy to find your your images so since our images is made in the orc contacts model then it named the folder orc contacts and if you go inside and we checked the avatar because the column is avatar we go inside we check and this is the uh, this is where our image will be and we could see that it generated our original photo a medium sized photo a small photo and a thumbnail size photo for us to use. So really cool thing, carry wave. If you if you, if you have any experience uploading images, then you can you could compare your past experiences to the your experience with carry wave. But other than that, that's pretty much completes our tutorial on how you upload images to S3 using Carrier Wave. Please rate, comment, subscribe if you have learned something. Leave comments and questions in the comment box and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.